Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. Well, what an exciting day we've had here at theCUBE. We've been at Spark Summit 2017 talking to partners, to customers, to founders, technologists, data scientists. It's been a, a a load of information, right? Yeah, <laughs> overload of information. Well, George, you've been here in the studio with me uh, talking with a lot of the guests. I'm going to ask you to maybe recap some of the top things you've heard today uh, for our guests. Okay, so, well, um, Databricks laid down uh, sort of three themes that they wanted folks to take away. Um, deep learning, structured streaming, and serverless. Now, deep learning is not entirely new to uh, Spark, mm -hmm. but they've dramatically improved their support for it. I think um, going beyond the, the frameworks that were written specifically for Spark, like um, uh, Deep Learning 4J and um, Big DL by Intel, and now like TensorFlow, which is uh, the open source uh, framework from um, Google, has gotten uh, a much better support. Structured streaming it was not clear like sort of how much more news we were going to get because it's been sort of talked about for 18 months and mm -hmm. they really, really surprised a lot of people, including me, where they took um, essentially the processing time for a, a, an event or a small batch of events down to one millisecond, whereas before it was in the hundreds, you know, if not higher. Mm -hmm. um, and that changes the type of apps you can build. Um, and also the, the Databricks, Databricks guys had coined the term continuous apps, mm -hmm. which means they operate on a never ending stream of data, which is different from what we've had in the past where it's batch or with a user interface re request mm -hmm. response. So they, they definitely turned up the volume on what they can do with um, continuous apps. And serverless, they'll talk about more tomorrow, and Jim I think mm -hmm. is going to weigh in, but it basically mm -hmm. greatly simpl simplifies the ability to run this infrastructure because you don't think of it as a cluster of resources, you just know that it's sort of out there and you ask requests mm -hmm. of it and it figures out how to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, the other big surprise for me was when we had Matei, who's the creator of mm -hmm. Spark and the chief technologist at Databricks, come on, on the show and say, you, when we asked him about how Spark was going to deal with essentially more advanced storage of data so that you could update things, so that you could get queries, queries back, so you could do analytics, um, and not just of stuff that's stored in Spark, but stuff that Spark stores essentially below it. And he said, you know, Databricks, you can expect to see um, come out with or partner with a database to do these advanced scenarios. And um, I got the distinct impression, and I have to li listen to the tape again, that he was talking about for Apache Spark, which is separate from Databricks, mm -hmm. that they would do some sort of key value store. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when you look at competitors or quasi-competitors like um, Confluence, Kafka, or a data artisan's Flink, they don't, they're not perfect competitors, they overlap some. Um, now Spark is pushing its way more into overlapping with some of those solutions. All right, All right. well Jim Kabilis, thank you for that George. You've been mingling with the masses today, and <laughs> you've been here all day as well. Educated masses, yeah, <laughs> who are really engaged in this stuff, yes. Well great, maybe give us some of uh, your top takeaways after all the conversations you've had today. They're not all that dissimilar from George's. Um, what Databricks, Databricks of course, being the center, the developer, the primary um, committer in the uh, Spark open source community, mm -hmm. they've done a number of very important things in terms of the announcements today at this event that push Spark, the Spark ecosystem, where it needs to go to expand the range of capabilities and their deployability into production environments. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the deep learning side uh, announcement in terms of uh, the, the deep learning pipeline API, very, very important. Now, as George indicated, Spark mm -hmm. has been used in a fair number of deep learning development environments, uh, but not as a modeling tool so much as a, as a training tool, a tool for 
in memory, distributed training of, of deep learning models that we've developed in TensorFlow and CAFE and other frameworks. Now this announcement is essentially bringing support for deep learning directly into the Spark modeling pipeline, the machine learning modeling pipeline, being able to call out to deep learning, you know, TensorFlow and so forth from within ML, LIB. That's very important. That means that Spark developers, of which there are many, far more than there are <laughs> TensorFlow developers, <laughs> will now have an easy path to bring more deep learning into their projects. That's critically important to democratize deep learning. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope and I, from what I've seen, what Databricks has indicated, they have support currently an API reaching out to both TensorFlow and Keras that they have plans to bring in API support mm -hmm. for access to other leading DL toolkits, such as CAFE, CAFE2, which is a Facebook developed, such as MixNet, which is uh, Amazon developed, mm -hmm. um, and, and so forth. That's very encouraging. Um, structured streaming is very important in terms of what they announced, which is a, the, an API to enable um, uh, access to faster, or, or higher throughput structured streaming in their cloud environment. Mm -hmm. And they also announced that they have uh, gone beyond, in terms of the, the code that they've built, the micro batch architecture of structured streaming to, to enable it to evolve into a more true streaming mm -hmm. environment. To be able to contend credibly with the likes of Flink. Because I think you know, that, this, that the Spark community has sort of had their back against the wall with structured streaming that they couldn't fully provide a true sub you know, millisecond end-to-end -end latency environment heretofore, but it sounds like with its R&D that uh, Databricks is addressing that, and that's critically important for the Spark community to continue to evolve in terms of continuous computation. And then the serverless apps uh, announcement is also very important, because I see it as really big, you know, as a fully managed multi-tenant Spark development environment as an enabler for continuous build, deploy, and testing DevOps within a Spark machine learning and now deep learning context. The Spark community as it evolves and matures needs robust DevOps tools mm -hmm. to productionize these machine learning and deep learning models. Um, because really in many ways, many customers, many developers are now using, are de developing Spark applications that are real 24 by seven enterprise application mm -hmm. artifacts that need a robust de uh, DevOps environment. Mm -hmm. And I think that Databricks has indicated they know where this market needs to go and they're pushing it with their R&D. And I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by all those signs. Oh, great, well thank you Jim. And I hope both of you gentlemen are looking forward to tomorrow. I certainly am. Oh, yeah. and, and to you out there, tune in again around 10 a.m. Pacific time. We're going to be broadcasting live here from Spark Summit 2017. I'm David Goad with Jim and George saying goodbye for now and we'll see you in the morning. <laughs>